Hi there, everybody, and welcome back to another stock analysis video. Today, let's actually analyze the company Chewy, a company that was actually brought up by Deathvice on the poll that I made as to which company you guys would like to see, where he said, Chewy, earnings this week, I work at a packaging facility and about 30% of all of the packages that we go through our warehouse are Chewy deliveries, insane amount. So let's actually see what this company has to offer when it comes to their fundamentals and make a conservative assumption based on their projected future cash flow. So with that said, let's get started with this analysis. Now we are going to jump right into the calculator guys. Chewy does not actually pay out a dividend. So this means that their five year average free cash flow and just their cash flow in general is going into themselves to pay down their debts, to buy back shares and to just grow the company. Now the ticker symbol is CHWY market cap of $11.4 billion PE of NA. So this usually means that they do not have earnings or at least they don't have positive earnings. They're not making any money. However, let's take a look at actually their other metrics just to see if maybe this $27.11 might be a decent share price. Now, coming over here to their dividends again, well, we know that they don't pay one. However, what's really concerning here is that the five-year average free cash flow is in the negative. So now let's jump into the fundamentals to see why this is actually negative. So starting, of course, with the net income, guys, five years ago of negative $338 million to one year ago of negative $73.8 million. So this is an increase of 78%. However, guys, overall, within the past five years, they have been in the red when it comes to their net income, which is, again, really, really bad. Now, they have been increasing it or at least decreasing it, their net income, uh, you know, hopefully next year they'll have or at least maybe after this earnings maybe they'll be a little bit better off however they're still in the red so this is something that you definitely need to take into account when making some assumptions now coming over here to the free cash flow the lifeblood of the company guys the most important metric when it comes to investing because every investment is the present value of all future cash flow five years ago of negative 120 million dollars to one year ago of negative 1.6 million dollars that is an increase on the five year of 99%. However, they do have an average five year free cash flow of negative $35.82 million, just as we saw a little while ago. So here's the thing when it comes to this. Yeah, they are increasing this and hopefully they'll become profitable in the future. However, guys, as it stands, we still have this negative 120 dragging everything down, which is probably why we see this negative $35 million. Even after we get the new numbers, this is still going to be in the negative when it comes to the average because we still have four years bringing it down at negative $57.6 million. So if anything, we would have to wait two years to hopefully have positive free cash flow to see if maybe we can actually think of investing in this company because as it stands, they are overall in the negative and just barely positive within the past three years. However, looking at the revenue, this is actually looking fairly, fairly good. Five years ago of $2.1 billion to one year ago of almost $8.9 billion, increase of 322.5% and on top of this increase, this is looking very, very good when it comes to the revenue. It is increasing fairly consistently throughout the past five years too, which is something that you want to look at. Now, when it comes to their profits, guys, this is looking really, really bad, right? Their net income is in the red and their cash flow is also in the red. Their cash flow is slightly above, right? It's slightly above. I mean, they were positive two years ago at $2.1 million, but nonetheless, the overall spectrum when it comes to the profits is that they do not have a really good, solid, consistent growth within the past five years. And that's going to come into a detriment when we make the assumptions for the next four years. Now let's take a look at the total assets minus the total liabilities. If the economy were to go really south, which we are seeing, right? Will this company be able to survive by paying off their debt? Well, currently guys, while they are positive at $14.8 million, they have been negative within the past five, four, three, and two years ago. Only one year ago is when they started to go positive at $14.8 million. And, you know, that's, they pretty much kept it the same to today. So as it stands, this is not a positive metric either. Even their average total assets around $1.3 billion, average total liabilities around $1.4 billion, and doing this difference, we get negative $132.7 million. And now coming over here to the shares outstanding, the metric that companies tend to fail. And well, we see that Chewy is also increasing shares. Now we don't have 
numbers for five and four years ago. However, we do have them for three, two, one year ago, and of course, current. Now, currently, they have around 420, nice, million shares outstanding. This is an increase from the previous year to the current year from two years ago of 415 million shares to, as I just said, 420.1 million shares. So as it stands, guys, they have been diluting you within the past three years or at least since we had numbers for the shares outstanding. Not good because, again, you want a company to be buying back shares, not issuing. And lastly, looking at the cash equivalents, currently they have $603 million in cash equivalents with an average cash of around $356 million. Now time to make some assumptions, low, median, high, using three different factors, as always, revenue growth, predicted share buyback, and the required rate of return. For revenue growth, guys, I like to use Seeking Alpha Scroll tab, looking at the revenue year over year and the revenue growth forward, and then making a conservative assumption between those two numbers. For the predicted share buyback, I'm going to be using the shares outstanding graph that we just saw as reference, and for the required rate of return, I like to keep it flat 10% to match the S&P 500. So let's actually make some assumptions here. For the low one, I'm going to say a revenue growth of 10%, projected share buyback of negative 2%. So for the projected share buyback, this means that they're going to issue shares at 2% within the next four years. For the revenue growth, guys, if you take a look at the growth tab on Seeking Alpha, you see that it is around 20%. Now, my job as the investor is to be conservative when it comes to the projected share value, especially when it comes to the cash flow, because every investment is the present value of all future cash flow. You want things that are reasonable and probable, not so much possible, right? Because anything can be possible. However, the probability that something happened is what matters the most. So that's essentially why my numbers when it comes to the revenue are this low. So with these numbers, this comes out to be a target share price, not adjusting for debt of $2.62. For the media assumption, revenue growth of 12%, predicted share buyback of 1%, this comes out to be $2.88. And for the high assumption, revenue growth of 14%, predicted share buyback of 4%, this comes out to be $3.17. Now let's adjust for debt. The way we do this is we take their net debt, we add their cash equivalents, and we add that to the market cap that the calculator comes up with. So if they have more cash than debt, this number comes up. If they have more debt than cash, this number comes down. And currently, guys, it does come up at around $4 or so. For the low assumption, it is now $6.65. For the median assumption, it is $7.22. And for the high assumption, it is $7.84. Now, I personally like to add a margin of safety, 5, 10, and 15%. And in doing so, this brings down the target share price adjusting for debt to $5.65 to $6.32. For the median assumption, it is between $6.14 to $6.86. And from high assumption, it is $6.66 to $7.45. So as it stands, guys, with the current share price of $27.11, this, as you pretty much can see, is pretty much expensive right now as it stands. However, guys, we are getting earnings with this company coming out on Wednesday after market. So these numbers might actually change once we get the earnings metrics. So just keep that in mind. I am recording this before that happens. So you may want to actually change these valuations as to your own fitting. Now, I have this calculator, guys, available for free. Anybody can have it, okay? It's available for anybody to have. It's in my calculator's playlist. There's videos in there with the link to the spreadsheet. And there is this calculator. There is a book value calculator for companies that don't have capital expenditures, like banks, utilities, and insurances. And also have a REIT calculator as well, which is for mainly REIT companies, right? Like Realty Income, Store Capital, that, that kind of stuff. And I also have a video on how to set up a dividend tracking sheet. I'm giving you guys these three free calculators and a dividend tracking sheet all i'm asking for in return is just help me grow my channel thank you so much for all the subscriptions so far i would love to get to a thousand subscribers by the end of the year that would be absolutely amazing and the reason why guys i'm giving out this calculator for free is because this is not financial advice all of these numbers can easily be changed with the assumptions that you come up with. So let's say, for example, when earnings come out, you think that, oh man, this is going to be amazing in the future. It's going to grow at like, I don't know, 20% and they're going to start buying back shares at like 20%, right? It'll be crazy. Well, now the target share price adjusting for debt will be around $11 or so. So it really just depends what your assumptions are. Also, if you change the required rate of return to like 7.5%, well, now it is $15.59. So it really just depends as to what kind of assumptions you like, what kind of situation you think this company will be in in the future. 
That's why make your own assumptions. This is not financial advice. All the numbers that we just saw with the graphs are public information, and these are just my assumptions. Hopefully, you do not follow them and you make your own because, again, every investment is the present value of all future cash flow. All in all, guys, when it comes to Chewy, I was actually fairly surprised. I was thinking this company was a lot better. Now, I personally like the companies that you know provide uh, dog food and pet food and that kind of stuff, mainly because I think this is going to be really, really prominent in the future, which is actually the reason why I personally invest in SJM. That is my personal holding. Now, I personally think, this is not financial advice, but I personally think SJM is significantly better than Chewy, just from a numbers perspective. I do need to analyze SJM again, but nonetheless, I personally prefer SJM than Chewy. But if you guys like this company, you think this company is going to be amazing in the future, then by all means, have this calculator and you make your own assumptions. So that pretty much does it for this video. Like the video, like, comment, subscribe. It really does help you with the algorithm on YouTube. You guys can follow me on my new exercise of Bit2 Odyssey and Rumble. Also have a Let's Play channel. The link is in the description below. So if you want to see that, you can follow me there. With that said, peace out and be on the lookout for the next stock analysis of video.